science and I know nothing about technology. So this is what we call the barefoot hippie portion of the uh, evening. <laughs> And uh, what I'd like, first of all, is it's going to be quite interactive as well. And we will time travel. OK, so I'd like a show of hands. Who here has regrets? Uh, there's one or two Edith PFs in the audience. <laughs> but generally speaking, most of us, I didn't raise my hands because I go by, you know, this amazing philosophy of have no regrets. Never apologize, never explain. Um, and I've really been enjoying the talks here today and was sort of mortified when I realized that Chris's talk right at the beginning that regrettably the USB with my talk in it had not come through the letterbox. So I'm kind of winging it here. But the, the whole point of my talk is why do we want to time travel? And let's bring it back to that human aspect, because your science bods are going to tell you, you know, the, the ins and outs of you can only go forward, you can't go back, paradoxes and all this sort of stuff. But why do writers always ignore entirely the science, um, you know, give, give a little nod to it, but never really um, buy into that entirely? Because it's that human element of why do we want to time travel? We want to time travel to not make the mistakes we made. So when we, if we knew on that very first date, this is the fuckwit I'm going to spend seven years in an on and off relationship with before I meet the love of my life, right? You know, would we then go on that first date? If we knew that our boss was going to you know, make us redundant in two years down the line and completely ignore our 15 years of service. I've completely messed up the, the kind of the gist there, but you get what I mean. That if we, if we thought, if we knew, if we had that pre-knowledge as to what we should do in our personal lives, life would be fantastic. Life would be great. So what I'd like you to do is close your eyes we're first, we're going to travel backwards in time, which I've been assured by every science person going that you really kind of can't do, you know, in future. So but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And you're going to be so disappointed because I've got no blue box. We're not actually time traveling. We're doing it all up here, but it's OK. So let's, let's start with close our eyes. And I want you to go back initially. Let's just go gently back to 10 years in time. And 10 years back, I want you to think about what you were doing. Bring yourself right back to, say, a bad haircut. You know, uh, what, what you're, where you're hanging out, the friends you're hanging out with, the life you're leading. And I want you to think about how you do things differently. Is there anything you'd change? Is there anything you wouldn't do? Is there anything you would do? And we're going to roll ourselves slowly forward. Having made that decision, which might be contrary to what you actually did do, and roll yourself forward. And I want you to start thinking about what the implications might have been of that decision that you made or unmade. And as you slowly roll yourself forward, are you now Prime Minister? Nobody wants to do that job. Are you living in another country with someone else, being someone else? Who knows? <coughs> OK. Open your eyes. And that's a very quick one. But what we're now going to do, and this is the exciting one, is we're going to do, I, I do guided meditations with people. And that wasn't really a guided meditation, because that was me planting seeds into your mind about the decisions you've made and how they probably impacted in your life, right? Now what we're going to do and apart from destroying probably some very expensive bits of equipment by me leaning nervously against a table, um, is we're going to go forward. 
and we'll do it like a proper guided meditation. And, you know, you'll hear my voice and I might crack a few lame jokes and it might throw you out of sync of what you're going with. Please don't worry about it. Ignore me. Let's do this. Let's do this properly. Let's do this the way we should do it and start. We're going to go forward and we're going to meet ourselves 20 years in the future. And we're going to come back with a message that will have impact for you right here, right now, from this day forward. And it will have as much of an impact or as little of an impact as you want. It will, might be profound in terms of whether you order whiskey or beer as your next drink. And it might be something trivial as to whether or not you leave her. Anyway, okay, so let's, let's um, we, we've been sat a lot today, so let's go, arms in the air, guys, let's, let's, yeah, let's have a real good, nice stretch. Yeah, that's it. Get your collarbone moving. And move that down, roll your shoulders. Yeah, that feels good. Get into your body. And close your eyes. And I saw some of your bastards didn't close your eyes last time. So do it. <laughs> do it. Right? So close your eyes. Commit. Come on, commit to the time travel. So close your eyes. And take your attention down to your toes. And really relax your toes. And I want you to feel that your foot inside your shoes or your boots or your trainers or barefoot or whatever are relaxing deep into that floor and really feel the relaxation moving up like a warm wave and you're relaxing your ankles and any sounds you hear washing over you don't attach to them feel that wave of relaxation moving up over your shins over your calves Softening your knees, softening the back of your thighs, the front of your thighs. Feel your hips softening. And soften your stomach, feeling it, that wave going up over your back, up your spine, over your torso into your shoulders, really feeling that wave of relaxation is sort of softening you down. Feeling it in your neck, coming down your arms to your elbows and your wrists and your fingers. And you're completely restful. Feel that relaxation in your neck. And take your attention to your jaw where we often hold a lot of stress and energy that's sort of all angry. Release that, let that go, let that go. It's a Sunday, you don't need it. And resting, feeling that relaxation over your forehead, back of your eyes, on your face, and up over the top of your head. And in that really relaxed state, I want you to imagine fantastic, brilliant white light in front of you. It's an amazing white light. It's got little sparkly bits in it. And I want you to walk towards the light. I'm not trying to kill my entire audience, just walk towards the light. And as you walk into this lovely white sparkling light, you can see before you three doorways. And I want you to pick a doorway and it's completely up to you as to what this doorway looks like. It might be ornate, it might be very modern. Having picked your particular doorway, I want you to open it and walk through. And as you walk through your doorway, I want you to see that in front of you, in a lovely wing back chair, there's a person who sat there. And that person is about 20 or so years older than you and they are the epitome of cool. This person who sat there in that chair, they know a thing or two. 
They know a thing or two about you. They know a thing or two about life. And I want you to really visualize who this person is. And as you start to realize how familiar they look to you, you realize, actually, this dude or dudette is me. And that person has a very specific message for you. And what I'd like you to do is maybe spend a minute having a little chat, finding out exactly what it is that that person has to tell you. It could be something personal. It could be something to do with your work. It could be something completely random about the way we're going with gaming in the future. It could be anything. The point is, that's a message just for you in this room. You are free to ask questions. And when you're ready, I want you to thank this older, cooler version of you. And I want you to leave the room. You don't have to back out. This isn't, you know, religious or anything. You can actually turn your back. Go, walk out that door, close the door behind you, walk down that tunnel of white, white light. What I'd like you to do is wiggle your toes. And I want you to return to the Star of Kings, beautiful name for a pub, and wiggle your fingers and maybe lift your shoulders a bit. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Is everyone back with me? I've not lost anyone. Good, good. Right, well, that, essentially, for those of you who have not done it before, it's guided meditation. And it's a bit awkward to do with this huge group of people and in this scenario. But one of the things that certainly meditation can do for you is put you in the mind space where you can kind of a little bit slip out of this time space continuum and get information that's useful for you in your everyday life. And essentially, what do we want from time travel? We want it to be useful for our everyday lives. Uh, if it isn't, it becomes really annoying. And, you know, it'll be things like you'll come home and what you, where you'd left things is not gone and suddenly you haven't got a husband. It becomes a Matt Damon film. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. So, um, so that, that's it. And have I, can I get a little bit of feedback? Did anyone find that useful or weird or did everyone feel cool with it and it was just whatever? That was, that was, oh, I got two thumbs up. Yeah, oh, several thumbs up. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you. And uh, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your talks and uh, the rest of your day. Give yourselves a round of applause.